come on. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we're getting there. Technology is our friend. It is. Hey, everybody. We're at uh, Mondo Market um, in Stanley, the Stanley location. I'm here with Nikki Burnett. Hey. I'm, your, I'm your host, Lowell White, with a 360 performance. And um, we're trying to get everything together. Uh, Henry's with us this morning. Henry, um, we're just going Facebook Live today. <laughs> and uh, taking it from there. Awesome. Let's just see if I can get my other video going the way I want it to. Cut me out. Am I? <laughs> yeah, just oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Can't do that. Okay. All right. So <laughs> today's show is about talking to the gut. Uh, performers need to have functional nutrition, and that's what Nikki is, a functional nutritionist. Yeah. And we're going to talk about not only the meaning of that, but we're going to talk about it in a place where you can get maybe some solutions to that leaky gut as we, after we define it. So. Uh, join us this morning um, for lunch. We're here until a little past noon. Uh, we're gonna I'll be ready for lunch. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> me too. We're gonna sample a little bit of what's what's happening here at Mondo Market in Stanley. And we're gonna meet um, Nicholas uh, Farrell, the uh, one of, owner and founder of Mondo Market. Uh, and you can go to mondomarketcolorado.com for their website. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But before I get into too much detail about leaky gut, which is important. I want to uh, make a couple mentions about some events that have happened in the last few days. Uh, one of which, um, as a young boy, this, uh, this gentleman influenced me a lot as a baseball player. Uh, Frank Robinson passed away. Um, he was, it, and still is, I think, his impression, his footprint, literally his footprint in the world of baseball and the world of business in baseball is going to be a lasting one. Um, he was in, he played in both leagues, the American League and the National League. Um, he stayed with baseball and in the, in the business of baseball to be a mentor and coach uh, to many, many young men in, in the business. I think his last connection with baseball was with the Washington uh, Capitals uh, baseball team as a, a coach and, and manager. But um, my, uh, my heartfelt gratitude goes out to his family and the players that he's influenced, uh, that have influenced me. So rest in peace, Frank Robinson. Also, we're gonna talk a little bit about NBA trades. There's some just emotional things that are going on. Uh, Mr. Davis, and I'm giving him respect and kind of a sarcastic tilt to my head. Um, he has, uh, you know, contract negotiations at the midpoint. Can you believe that the midpoint of the NBA season, it just doesn't make sense to me. It kind of affects my gut a little bit. I get a little, <laughs> get a little a little acid burn. <laughs> but there's also been talks about uh, Kevin Durant and uh, the Golden State Warriors and just any number of, of athletes being talked about with the NBA. Um, I've got a little sheet here to get my names right. Where the heck is my, you know what? Uh -oh. Yeah, I left it, on the, left it on the printer. How about that? Well, anyway, Kevin, Gar uh, Kevin Durant and uh, a lot of players have been talked about but it, it didn't really go anywhere. So you NBA fans, you know, go, with, go with the ones that are the best. You, you know, LA Lakers, Golden State Warriors, you're gonna have the Boston Celtics are gonna be in the, in the run for it. I think you're gonna get a play from Philadelphia a little bit. They're, they've been working hard. Um, you've got uh, the, the Raptors are also been working hard. Uh, and it, you know, it all comes down to who's got the resiliency and the tenacity to stick with it um, for the long haul. Um, oh, that's the one I wanted to remember. Mark Gasol. That's a legitimate trade that might happen. His brother, you know, played many years in the in the NBA, um, and Mark Mark may be a trade. Um, and I'm, I'm bringing that up as a lead into our mindset segment. We start off every show with uh, our first segment is mindset, and, and starting each day with, with the removing the negatives as I've moved to positivity. Yes. Positivity is yes. great, but it's remove the negative. So. I want to make sure we're talking about that. Big oh my gosh! And we're going to talk about removing the negatives from inside, <laughs> from the guts. As inside, my inside, outside. Well, outside. you know that that phrase, Nikki, gets me because my my choral teacher in high school, she was she was a trainer, a voice trainer for operatic singers, 
her ex-husband was an opera, opera singer, and she would always say, from the gut, people, from the gut. <laughs> yeah, from the gut. And I go, it has a whole new meaning for me now <laughs> about work from the gut. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, so let's, in starting out the mindset segment, let's talk a little bit about the why. Why, why is this, why is it important to me? I mean, I know for, it's a rhetorical question for me. Yes. But why is it important to think about what goes in and sits in our gut? Yes. That's the question, why? Why, why, I, for me, there's, I listed out 10, 10 things. Um, this one, uh, bloating was the one that got me. Uh huh. So that's one. Yep. And there's a whole bunch of others in there as well. So I'm not gonna emphasize too many of them. I'll let you kind of take that that swing at it. Mm -hmm. But immune dis immune responses, inflammation is the big thing for me. Yep. Uh, that bloating feeling also bothers me. And the other one that's on this list, oh, there's two other ones, is fatigue. And joint pain. Yeah. I mean, to the point where you could actually think that you might be suffering from some kind of arthritic problem. Yeah. So, why why leaky gut? Why should we think about it? Well, so I think first off, it's important to understand that you know we can have these symptoms. It can be due to leaky gut. It can be due to bacterial infection. It can be due to both. It can be due to all kinds of things. Yeah. So just because we have some of these symptoms, we don't want to automatically assume leaky gut. But that's why we test, right? We want to understand truly what's going on functionally with the body so we can address whatever it is that's going on. And so once it is determined, which we can test for, there's a test that is, it's an intestinal permeability test um, that we can do to confirm it. But there are also some some other tests that can give you indicators on whether it's you're dealing with leaky gut, if there are certain micronutrients that are deficient. But the point is, um, in understanding who you are, and how your body's functioning, and that's of course how we know what we should eat, what we should eat, what we need to avoid. And even if it's avoiding it for a period of time, um, there are a lot of, a lot of. Well, there are a few things that definitely need to be. Because we're we're talking about recovery, right? The mm -hmm. leaky gut is something that's happened over time, right? Yep. Very slowly, by the mm -hmm. way. And so there's a repair that can happen. It can also happen quickly. Oh. So let me say this real quick, because this is really, really interesting. If you have had a concussion. Uh -huh. A concussion automatically creates leaky gut. It opens up those cell walls. Okay, my football players, if you're yeah. listening, <laughs> we got to talk. Yeah, so <laughs> it's the, a big deal. So that could mm -hmm. that could perpetuate and enhance the um, the the lap or the inflammation process. Oh yeah. And the achy and soreness oh, part yeah. of stuff. Okay. Mental and emotional. All so kinds of what stuff. do we do to measure that? I mean, obviously the outward symptoms we have, but once we identify that and go see you or physicians or both, mm -hmm. what are we going to measure then? And, and why are we measuring the chemistry? So, well, you, are you talking about like labs? Or are you yeah, talking because I can get the with symptoms. We're gonna keep hammering on those, sure. but once I even see the symptoms, I want to be specific about what I'm going to attack, right? To try to fix. Yeah. Well, essentially, what we're fixing is there's a chemical that is released that that brings the cell the cells apart. Mm -hmm. So it's called zonulin, and so. We want to make sure that zonulin is low. So we can test zonulin, we can see if it's high. We can also test for certain bacterial infections um, that can create, that can make zonulin go up. Okay, I've got so many puns here. I'm gonna be anal retentive. <laughs> Great. So zonulin, mm -hmm. where do we get that from? It's a natural molecule, a natural protein in our body. Okay. And we, it is there for a reason because over the, hundreds of thousands, millions of years, there are times in our lives, and I don't think it's much anymore, but early on where we needed to have this phenomenon happen. So, well, so one of the reasons we're here at Mondo Market mm -hmm. is because there's been some stuff over time that's happened to our food supply. Yes. Through the lack of cultivation or improper cultivation. Right. Changing and, our food. And that's not even talking about what's applied to the food yeah. that's growing. We're right. talking right. about what's been put in the dirt. Yeah. And then it keeps getting routinely rotated through and through and through. Yeah. And so it hasn't gone away. Right. From what we think might be good foods, because somebody labeled it with a name, yeah. still may be a contributor to leaky gut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got so zonulin. Chemicals, there are lots of chemicals that can increase zonulin. So it has been shown that the pesticides and herbicides also will create leaky gut, which leads to autoimmune conditions mm -hmm. um, in a process. But yeah, so zonulin, so alcohol can do it. Gluten increases zonulin significantly. Okay. 
Okay. Um, dairy has the potential of increasing it depending on the dairy. Um, if you're already in an in, in inflamed state, then dairy is a bad thing. I'm in an inflamed so. state most of the day. <laughs> I try to regulate that. Now it's getting serious though. There are people who have varying degrees of attention uh -huh. to this. You know, you know people, I know people that really get off the charts interested in the gluten thing and, and fats and carbs and fiber and you know protein and all this kind of stuff. So I don't want to oversimplify because I don't want to ignore anything, yeah. but I want to acknowledge the fact that there are varying degrees of folks out there that are doing whatever they need to do. And, and it's places like Mondo Market, places and yourself that can help people kind of focus in on what's the right strategy for right. them, right? Right. So we talked a little bit about the extremes. Mm -hmm. What are some things that are really essential characteristics of leaky gut that you want to make sure people know about so that they don't overreact? Yep. Yep. What are some of those? So we kind of have to take it down back to basics because leaky gut is created by by several different things, mm -hmm. but symptoms of that, if we have, if there's an, if you have an autoimmune condition, you have leaky gut, um, period. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I am working with somebody that comes to me that has an autoimmune condition, I don't test for leaky gut because I don't want to waste the money. Right. We just work with them as they have leaky gut. So beyond that though, what can symptoms be? Of course we can have the gut stuff and maybe some bloating and, you know, some pain and discomfort and all of the other stuff that comes along with it. Um, we can also go back and forth from constipation to diarrhea, but those can be—I know—those <laughs> can be um, those can be symptoms for lots of things. But a big thing to understand too is if the gut's on fire, the brain's on fire. So understanding that if we ha if we're dealing with leaky gut, which many of us are, we're also probably dealing with leaky brain. So that creates brain fog. Uh, and anxiety, depression, you know, mental and emotional disorders. You're, you're hitting all the high points with me. Brain fog mm -hmm. and inflammation. Fatigue. I mean, my, my gosh. Yeah. So. I should just crawl over in there and lay on the concrete and just <laughs> kind of just give into it. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You I'm shouldn't. trying to use levity, people. Do what people. you're doing. You do what you're doing and you, you work with it. <laughs> I, and, and, you know, I should also say that at, as I've aged, things have changed. And I've been open enough, humble enough, and vulnerable enough, which is a guy thing, yes. uh, trying to be there, is to understand that I've changed. I didn't have this when I was a kid. I ate anything I wanted to. I, mean, I was a farm kid. Now, some of that's problematic because of right? where I came from and you know the, 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 the starches and the, the fats and stuff that would seem to be just great, flavorful, but I've got to change. So my recommendation to everybody out there is take a look at it, make sure you're feeling who you are, and then seek out assistance from people like Nikki, and we'll share information about Nikki's contact information uh, a little bit later. But we also wanted to bring you to a place like Mondo Market so you understand, hey, there are resources here. So when I identify this stuff, Nikki, with the, the different symptoms that, that may or may not be an aggressive case of, of um, leaky gut, it could be something else as well, um, what, what do I need to do to, other than see you, what do I need to do to adjust my lifestyle with what I eat? So, I mean, it stinks, but it's it's true and it's always the case that if there's a situation of leaky gut or autoimmune, um, gluten has to be out. It okay. has to be out of the diet, period. Um, and there's no just a little bit. There really isn't. I have lots of clients that say, what if I just have a little bit once a week or even once a month? If you have a molecule of gluten, the body is very, very smart. The body knows exactly what it is. And I'll it confess, will it you will feel it. It's mm -hmm. like giving yeah. up sugar for a while and then just having a, 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 a tea with a lemon in it. And any, any little bit of sugar, you're going to, woo! <laughs> Same thing with the gluten. Yeah. I mean, I, all of a sudden, I just yeah. ballooned mm -hmm. when I did that. And, I, and, I, and I, look at I, I don't have a gluten problem chemically, but because I know what it does to my gut and I want to solve that problem, and gluten is a thing that can help or hinder that, mm -hmm. I've got to get rid of it as much as I can. Yeah. And, and yet it's tough. It's really tough. It is. it is. I love bread. I'm just saying it right up front. Well, and so here's here's the thing too, is if it's just a sensitivity and you are in a in a healthy space. Mm -hmm. So we, we move through this process, we, we you know, repair the gut and all is balanced and well for you. If okay. you go to Europe and okay. you decide you want to eat bread over there, then it's probably just gonna be fine with you. Um, if you have an autoimmune condition, you should never have gluten. It just inflames okay. you. 
But Give me some examples of autoimmune stuff. Uh, Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune okay. thyroid condition. Uh, multiple sclerosis. Okay. Uh, celiac. Um, uh, colitis. Okay. Uh, ulcerative colitis. Um, you know, there are hundreds. Arthritic conditions? Uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Because I'm looking at those things that are really joint, mm -hmm. connective tissue, inflammatory mm -hmm. responses. Yep. Okay. There, there's, I don't remember what it's called, but there's an autoimmune condition that, that, that does it, can, it um, attacks the cartilage. So in oh. the ears and nose, um, I have a client who. Is what are the outward symptoms like that. of that? Red and pain. Lots of red That's pain not swelling. Fun. It's not. It's really, really uncomfortable. But what's scary about this, if it's not under control, is we have connective tissue all mm -hmm. over the body inside in our major organs, yeah. in cartilage. And it has the potential of being a real problem. Well, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell people something about that. If you, if you feel uncomfortable and you think, well, I should go work out, be athletic. That cartilage and connective tissue that supports the organs is like shock absorbers. So if you're out there running or even just lifting weights or doing something very low impact, those shock absorbers are being tested already because of what's happening with the inflammation. They're, they're being attacked. Yeah, so if you then start system. doing this mm -hmm. and bouncing around, the bumpers aren't as good as they could be, yeah. so be aware of that. Yeah. Now that's my segue to, uh, we finished up our mindset segment where we've talked about that remove the negative. We're talking about removing a negative in our world, about in our gut, and, and talking about leaky gut and the, the things that influence that for enhancing or diminishing it, hopefully diminishing, especially for myself. Um, but our segue then for, from our mindset segment is to go into our skills segment, which talk, we talk about our five senses and our awareness with our five senses. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but before I do that, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you to take a look at 360mindset.com, that's my website. We're gonna be posting some things on the website. One of those things I'm gonna post for those who respond is I have a real good connection with the Wood Woodens, Coach John Wooden, uh, NCAA championship coach nine times over, uh, Wooden, Wooden's Wisdoms. This is my newsletter I get from him. I will send you um, Bill Belichick's, he's got, <laughs> I, I'm a fan, but not a fan <laughs> of Bill Belichick. But he's got four points that John Wooden would agree with, and not only would he agree with, he authored them because Bill Belichick uses them. These four points. I will send you the dependability is more important than the ability from Bill Belichick. Four points he has. There's knowledge, humility. Yeah, whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. I dropped it. Okay, okay. I got it, I got it. I'll moment. be back. <laughs> Okay, knowledge, humility, adaptability, and self-control. See, I lost my self-control. It's so all over it there for a minute. So I'll send that to you. So check my website out, 360mindset.com, and we'll, we'll send that out to you. All it requires is an email. Just go into 360mindset.com, put in an inquiry, a question, and ask for the Bill Belichick a, a dependability to ability uh, uh, four points, and I'll send that out to you. So... Um, with that being said, we're here. I have my five senses that should be helpful in picking foods. So what foods should I pick and why should I pick them? Honestly, well, and really it depends on who you are. It depends yeah. on your body. If you have, if there are certain foods that we find that you're sensitive to or that you already know you're sensitive to, those, those sensitivities just create inflammation. Okay. And so if you know that there are foods you're sensitive to, you know, cut those out. Like if, dairy, for example. Dairy. It could be blueberries. Yeah. I mean, it could okay. be oatmeal. So that know, allergy things. thing. Look at the allergy. If you're allergic uh, no, to something. Different, no, different. Different. Okay. Allergies and sensitivities are, are different parts okay. of the immune system. And so but I'm allergy, sensitive to allergies. <laughs> yes, okay. allergies are no fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> so sensitivities. Give me a difference then. Sensitivity so versus allergies, allergies. Allergies tend to come on quickly. So whether it's as quick as like an anaphylactic shock type of a situation. Gotcha or within an hour, or you might get like a scratchy throat, yeah, scratchy yeah. ears, scratchy eyes, that kind of thing, and they okay. happen pretty quickly. Whereas for sensitivities, say gluten for example, mm -hmm. it can take two to nine days to, to have, to, 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 for your body to, to react to gluten. So for absorb, me, it, absorb it and metabolize it, and it takes some time to do that it's anyway. Just, yeah, it's and just then the it may sit the there, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yep. For right. me, it's 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 eight days. I figured it out. It's eight days. So do this? Do the signs differ once it hits you? Once the sensitivity hits you? It depends on the person. 
Okay. It really does. It can be fatigue. It can be brain fog. It can be joint pain. For me, it's pimples. I yep. have these nasty pimples on my face. I have one right here. It's been uh, there for yeah, yeah, okay, like whatever. two months. You know, well, it looks I mean, huge. It finally it's just like an eight, it's a third literally, eye. Literally, it's been there for two months. Okay. I mean, just forever. Um, I know, I'm not as sensitive to that stuff. I just, I would just pick at it and let it go away. I wouldn't care. It's a guy thing. I don't care. <laughs> So, um, okay, so got it's, those. It's, it's different for every person. Do you think it, it not trying to generalize mm -hmm. it, oversimplify it, but do you think it's more in the in the skin skin area? Is it sensitive to show up in skin? It or is, can. Well, they, you said achiness, though, too. Yeah, the joints it can and, be skin. It can be achy. It can be brain stuff. It can be um, a stomach ache. It can be, I mean, it's really, you know, we're all so biochemically unique um, and genetically unique okay. that whatever our genetics or maybe even our epigenome predisposes mm -hmm. us to, I, I think is how we present. So moms and dads, as well, well and, and significant others of spouses who are active or professional athletes, use your, we're talking about skills, five senses, so watch. When you feed your family, watch the response is what you're saying. Over a period of time, the sensitivities, now if it's an allergic reaction, it could be right, right. away, um, and more than likely you already know about that, and you have yeah. the EpiPen ready yeah. to yeah. you know mm -hmm. plug that in. But I would imagine that the occurrences and the severity of occurrences is diminished or goes away by our realization of what we're putting in our body. So I want to throw something out there to think about because okay. I think this is really important. When you talk about you know people and their families and if, when they have uh, you know their kids, we have a lot of kids that are on ADD, ADHD drugs, mm -hmm. um, and where we are falling short is understanding that a lot of this has to do with what we're feeding our kids. Whether we understand it or not, we may think we're doing the very best that we can, and, and obviously we all do the best that we can by our kiddos. But there are dyes and the sugars, and um, the, the, so whether it's candy or breads or any of those things, or again, the dyes that are in our food, these can create a, a heightened state, an excitatory state in these kids, um, and they are truly unable to focus. And so feeding our kids, you know, foods that are, you know, like I would say, focus on vegetables, do a little bit of fruit, healthy meat, healthy fat, and limit the sugar, limit the dyes. I mean, the data's there showing is it, that is these it all dyes sugars? are bad news. Is it all sugars? Um, I would say, I mean, if you do too many bananas for a kid, okay. potentially, yeah, it's Because I'm trying to there, find my way into the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> We want to find our way out of the sugar. Because I could just like take honey and just like. Oh. <laughs> I just, well, raw honey in moderation, small amounts. See, there's the word. Yeah, moderation. Good. Okay. I hate, well, no, and I, can I do hate that. the word moderation. I could do that. I hate moderation because moderation is relative, right? By amount, right? <laughs> I yeah. could do it once and have a gallon. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. All it's right. a terrible All right. thing. All right. It's a terrible right. phrase. Everything in moderation because it's not true. But honey is good. It's got great enzymes, and probiotics. Okay. It's antimicrobial. Raw honey is an amazing thing, but in small amounts. Okay. And if you, especially if you're doing it therapeutically, it can also help to build your gut microbiome. I'm a dessert nut job. I love desserts. So we'll have to work on some things that are gonna be oh, better say for that. you than okay. the candy. Makes me work harder. Okay, I don't have a problem with it. It's okay, <laughs> I can do this. All right, so we're in, our, we're in the segment about skills. And it's basically related to the five senses. So we're talking about awareness, be aware, what you're feeding your family. But now let's get into the taste, the, the sight, the smell from a standpoint of foods. Is there anything about what we see when we go out to the grocery store or go come to a Mondo market and start selecting the products that are there? Or should we be looking for certain things? I mean, categories. Okay. Vegetables. Okay. Stop saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> we don't I, get enough vegetables. Okay, Is, are there specific ones that could be more beneficial than others? Oh, you're gonna hate me, but it depends on the body. Don't See, say... It, it's true. Some people can't do nightshades. Nightshades are peppers and eggplants and tomatoes. Some people have a real problem with nightshades. Um, some people have... Uh, so, let's... Look at those little round things that look like small cabbages. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. I hate them. The best. Oh, please. Get a good pastured bacon, a healthy bacon, and cook your Brussels sprouts in it, and it's phenomenal. Okay, people, you can put whatever you want on them. I'm not eating them. I don't know. I bet you'd eat mine. My husband said the same thing. Oh, my, my grill and the, 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 the olive oil and still, no. Oh, the smell just right. stuck in my head with what my mom did to me. 
Okay. It's just bad. I'm going to make them for you. Okay. I'm going to okay. change your mind. I even changed my 17-year-old nephew. Okay. Oh, it's crazy. Then I can change yours. Okay, so we got, we got bro <laughs> tomatoes, nightshades. I got that. And there's tolerances. I get that. So what about the areas of, see, this is one other area for me, carbohydrates and fiber. Of course, you get fiber from vegetables, but mm -hmm. carbohydrates. What we want to think about always is nutrient density. So, okay. Um, what does that mean? What that means is how it's going to feed us, how, how food is going to feed us. Bread, I don't care what form bread is in, mm -hmm. except the way it was made like you know, 100 years ago mm -hmm. and before as a sourdough and proper way it's made, which is not made this way anymore. Sometimes it is, but rarely. That might actually be able to, to feed your body. But the breads, the pastas, the the sugary stuff, all of those things, they don't feed us. Are you talking and about longevity? I'm talking about I'm talking about how you feel now and I'm talking about longevity. Okay. So what we have to remember when I talk about nutrient density, and I I know I've said this before, um, I don't know if I've said it to you, but I think that I have, is the food that we eat is communication. It's how our bodies know what to do. The food we eat tells our body what to do. The nutrients within are speaking to our cells and to our DNA. If we're eating clean food that feeds our body, then our body knows what to do. If we're eating foods that are broken, that are dirty, that are processed, that are chemical laden foods, then it's a very broken line of communication. Our cells don't know what to do. Our body starts this is the body talking to us. Well, let's let's take not a break, but we're gonna bring in Nicholas Farrell Hi. here. Hello. Nicholas, you're gonna have a seat Hi. right there. Okay. And this is a perfect time to have Nicholas come in and talk to us. Because I'm gonna have Nick you're gonna Where jump up. We go? Jump up. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Right there. Right now sit. Okay. So we're we're all here together. <laughs> and I'm going to let Nicholas and Nikki talk because it's about his products and what she just said about nutrients and you know the cleanliness, processing, all that kind of stuff. Because we're in the epicenter. We're in the epicenter of the good, clean stuff. And I'm loving this. So you guys have added about, first of all, Nick, share with us what is Mondo Market all about and, and what is your passion about being here? Absolutely. Well, uh, again, thank you very much for hanging out in our shop today. So. Um, Mondo Market uh, really focuses on worldly ingredients and that goes uh, beyond just items from uh, Europe and items from Asia and whatnot. It really goes into techniques and ways that things are made and family traditions, how they're passed down from artisan to artisan. So we focus on cheese, charcuterie, uh, uh, fresh foods out of our prep foods case and uh, we actually launched our fresh pasta program at this location as well so uh, again another very clean item uh, it's flour salt water is in our pasta our pasta is actually vegan by nature we just we still don't talk about it because then the, the meat eaters might not buy it so, yeah. <laughs> so you made two really good points I want, want to address with Nikki so vegan versus gluten are they the same or different totally different okay so but there is gluten-free pasta, right? Yes. Okay, and then um, the other one was, um, okay, I was there, then I lost it. <laughs> See, I'm in a fog. I need to eat something different. <laughs> Stop eating the gluten. Cheeses. <laughs> Cheeses. So on the cheese okay. side of thing, what is, should we step right. up more with that? Not, give me, because I love cheeses, and I've had their cheese here at Mondo Market, so I'm, I'm really biased. So, you're, you keep asking, it depends on the body. So, if. I want one answer for everything. Are, there's not. Okay. There never is. So, we gotta work Moderation so, is about no, the closest No, no. Uh, so, it really depends. So, if, when we're looking at cheese, we're looking at one, we're looking at genetics. Some people genetically can handle cheese and some people can't. Some people have autoimmune conditions and they should not have gluten and they should not have dairy, ever. Because cheese, even when it's raw, which is what I promote, is a good, raw, healthy cheese. Um, and if it's pasture based, even better. Uh, but they, it can be a healthy food. But the problem is, if you are in an inflammatory state, there are two pathways. The cheese has the ability to go down, and it can go down the anti-inflammatory pathway if we're already healthy. We don't have an inflammatory process already going on. But if, if we do, 
then it can go down that inflammatory pathway and create more inflammation. So we just, we have to know ourselves, we have to know if we can handle cheese, if we're not in an inflamed state, if we're healthy, then cheese is a great food. I mean, who doesn't love cheese? But just not everybody should or can have it. So Nick, talk about your artisans, especially as it relates to cheese. Well, I mean, and I had some questions too. I, I, I'm very interested in what you're talking about. Um, but in regards to artisans and uh, Small, we we'll just call it smaller batch product a lot of times. Um, and even there's some larger manufacturers that do good things as well. But uh, it, it's important to us that all of our products come from very good producers, meaning not a, not a lot of garbage additives, not a lot of things that uh, don't taste great. That's a really big factor in what we do. Uh, sorry, it, it is about the health, but it's also about enjoyment well, of food. Of course That's it one is. of the things. Because you're it's, serving it's, a lot of yeah. different people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Different degrees of sensitivity. Um, of course, yeah. Um, but the, it's really a bonus when it's uh, local and domestic. Uh, we really love our local artisans that we work with and our, our local producers. Uh, but the number one rule in the shop is that it has to be of great quality. Awesome. So, uh, that's yeah, great. Those are, that's kind of our, our broad scope ethos uh, is how we pick our ingredients. So, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's good. So I, I didn't get a chance to see. So how, how do you know that you have these sensitivities? Is what I'm always interested in because maybe somebody doesn't know that they have uh, sensitivity to. Uh, dairy at the time, but you say that can pass too, right? It can pass over time. Yeah, a lot of a lot of times when we have sensitivities, especially if I'm looking at a sensitivity panel and it's all red, which is not good. Um, it's not necessarily the food that you're sensitive to, but you're having an inflammatory or an immune response. Okay. And so it's really understanding what the labs say, understanding what your body's doing, and then bringing the balance back. You know, whether it's regulating the immune system. And then, yeah, hopefully, you know, over a period of time, the foods that I say you cannot have right now, yeah. later on, we can have. Well, I, what I really like is the fact that you're still allowing at another time uh, people to trickle those things back in that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. Whereas it seems like a lot of things uh, tend to go, well, nope, you have a sensitivity, you have an allergy, you can yeah. never have that again. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds more more realistic yeah. for a consumer. Yeah. So, allergies, sorry, but I, know, I do want to confirm, allergies most of the time will not change. Yeah. So that would, like a peanut allergy, sure. those things, probably that's a, a lifelong thing. Sensitivity so, is different. What should the business owner, like a Mondo Market, do at, at, the, at the point of sale or signage around the those establishments about sensitivities and allergies? So there be, should you let people know? Should you be there to answer questions for them. How would you recommend business owners to make that awareness happen? <laughs> this would be good because I can chime in on the operator perspective. Yeah, that. no, yeah. That's, yeah, because I think it really depends on the business. Um, sure. I think it's always good, you know, as a as a nutritionist, and that happens with gluten sensitivities and that kind of thing. It's always nice to know that I can go in and foods are prepared one way, or you know, um, but but knowing for my like my celiac clients, oh, yeah. you know, they we have to be really really careful with them. And so that's always helpful to me. I, I, I like to know um, if things are organic or if they're pasture raised or you know, you know, local, those things. Um, but really it depends on what you as the business owner are looking to do and to attract and who you want. It. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the answer is is that all of us business owners, we need all the business we can get. So yeah. we want, uh, you know, we, we want to have as many answers for our customers as possible. That comes down to, for us, in our model, it comes down to education of our team and, mm -hmm. uh, and then also uh, educating our, our guests. So um, uh, by no means in, my, in our model do we want to start labeling all of our shelves and going crazy because right. then, yeah. then I can have a, a litany of, uh, you know, a book at yeah. every, oh, yeah. every listing. So, it's expensive um, to do things like that. It's too much. And it's kind of the longer path with us because we want to talk to our guests. We want to, we want to say hello. We want to say, no what are you into? Right, well, I, the way it should be or the way that we do things. Yeah, I mean, no, I yeah, I, I think it's the way it should be. That's why I have a business that does that. Mm -hmm. Well, and capability is uh, a big thing. You can't sure. distract your staff to a too, too high a degree. That but at the same thing. time, yeah. as a grandparent who has, like son and daughter-in-law who have kids who have ADD, red dyes. And they, my daughter-in-law looks for places that are sensitive and will answer her questions about, mm -hmm. do you have products with red dye yeah. or don't you? Yeah. And my, believe me, my grandkids will eat 
out of house and home. <laughs> they are undying appetites for food. Well, so, I can tell you a good thing, we don't make a habit of adding red dye. Anymore, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's a good thing. Perfect. So before, before I let you go, uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about uh, what what are, what are the specials this week or anything like that? I, I haven't had a chance to really talk to you about it, but is there something you want to really promote and talk about to our, our audience? Well, absolutely. I, well, I should actually promote our new location. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're opening up uh, inside of Broadway Market. It's a uh, the newest food hall here in Denver. And uh, it's at 10th and Broadway downtown by the Capitol. And we're, we're doing Mondo Mini is what we're calling it because we're only going to be 400 square feet. But we're taking the best of both shops and really featuring those items in Mondo Mini. So that, that's our biggest news. Nice. Other than that, we have chilaquiles on the menu for our feature. And, of course, all of our fresh pasta and delicious cheeses here for everybody. The cheeses. <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> emphasize that. They're awesome. Yeah, so. Um, so we'll be talking to you a little bit later. Thank, thank good you to so have much. you here. Yeah, really good to talk you. to you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks for being here. All right, see you. Appreciate I gotta, it. I'm going to take care of some glare. We're getting some really wonderful sunshine, but it's. Uh, let's see if I can dampen. Oh yes. There you go. Oh, yes. Look at that. How how high tech can I be? Yeah. <laughs> Take my scarf <laughs> and use it as a buffer. <laughs> All right. So that was Nicholas Farrell. Uh, Nicholas is the owner um, and brains behind with his wife Christy. This is a great spot. It um, is. I'm just really excited to to be here and and, and have him share with us what's going on. Um, let's see if I can do There we go. I think yeah. I got it. Um, so our, our next segment is about um, the mindset, which is about process, or mental conditioning, sorry, about mental conditioning. And it's about process. So we talked a little bit about the store, going in, using your five senses to kind of investigate what's it look like. I mean, I, I just love smelling vegetables, believe it or not, even though I kind of, eh, Brussels sprouts, I don't want to smell those. but. Um, I think this, the smell, doesn't that give you kind of a, an, an understanding of freshness? And, sure. and, and then obviously you got to ask the questions about who brought them to the store. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I have my, my preferences with Whole Foods, and as you do too, you, you, you go to different stores for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a way to discover if it's not right? I mean, I've, other than the obvious, like I pick up bags of lettuce, and I look for and brown. brown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going, what? <laughs> So, Why would I buy this? And then, you know, the, the dates of, mm -hmm. of uh, expiration and that kind of thing. But are there anything, is there anything more that we need to know about that? I mean, I think, I don't, I hate to sound simplistic, but I think it's just kind of common sense. Um, you know, we want to be careful. I would say that, you know, there's a, there is a, a situation with people with histamine intolerance if food is too old um, and it may not be bad but if it's too old it builds up histamines because that's what happens in the degradation process um, so you, those people may not do well with older foods or yeah. with leftovers or foods that are you know um, in uh, uh, you know the self-serve kind of things so things like that could be a problem for some people but other than that that knowing who you're dealing with they mm -hmm. they 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 have the fresh food, they know where their food's coming from. You know, we have another problem in our world with food being, being taken off of the stalk or off of the vine way too early, so the nutrient density never even has the ability to be there. So we have these tomatoes that are taken off green. Well, they turn red over time, or they are, are they sprayed or radiated? I can't remember, but it makes them turn red quicker. But they still don't have the nutrient density that we It's that actually we want. both. There's both that can happen, the spray and the yeah. and the radiant. Yeah. And, and and this time of year, because I love blueberries, there's blueberries coming from uh, Central and South America. Mm -hmm. And those are picked really, really early. Yeah. So so they ripen on the way here and they're under either refrigerated or frozen yeah. conditions yeah. and then they time them as to when they, they expose them to get them more, more ripe. So turn the containers over. And you'll see the smaller berries that have been picked early. They're a little green yet. Yeah. Don't pick those. And don't be afraid, as I do, even with people kind of looking at me sideways, open the container, pick one out, and eat it. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's, it's only one. You know, so if it's got something <laughs> on it, yeah, well, okay. it's, it's my health. I'm concerned about my health. <laughs> I'm justifying my behavior. I have, I have done that before. Yeah, so it's once you know, it's the take <laughs> once or twice. Yeah, <laughs> got you too. So it's it's a matter of using the five senses in in a situation, 
where you're, you're practicing a process so you improve yourself. So look look at the bottom. Uh, there's strawberries have been coming out. I mean, these huge, huge strawberries. I looked at where they're coming from, and they're coming from Chile, mm -hmm. which, which you know, is so, an amazing place. Yeah, it's it's awesome. But this time of year, with them that big, you kind of go, really? Yeah. What's going on? And they're they're not. Um, they have a good flavor, but they're they're bitter. Yeah. They're are sour almost. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, they they weren't allowed to ripen because they have to travel too far. Yeah, and the size will get you. It'll mm -hmm. suck you in, and, and you'll, you'll yeah. get that. So yeah. those are some things. From a process standpoint, I want to make you aware of um, so that you you pick the foods that Nikki has talked about that's going to help you um, combat those inflammatory responses that may be due to leaky gut or any any number of different things yeah. that may be happening in your world. So um, before I forget it, I want to check the clock, stay true to what we're doing. We're about quarter till the hour. Um, one of the things I want to talk about before I we move away from process is where do supplements fit into the process of my gut health mm -hmm. and what are they? Well, so <laughs> therapeutic supplementation is going to be really important because in, in dealing with uh, repairing the gut, there are nutrients that we need that, that we need higher levels of. Is that because we've lost levels. them over time? Well, so, so let's take glutamine. Okay. Glutamine, for example, glutamine is an amino acid and it's the most used amino acid by the lining of the gut. And so if we are dealing with a, a damaged gut, then it's gonna be used up, and it's gonna be used and used and used. So, it, this is actually a good example because a lot of people will tell you, well, just go take a bunch of glutamine. And where the problem comes in, where you need to have, in my mind, it's really important to have a professional or already know who you are, because for some people, genetically, if they take in too much glutamine, and so this can be in the form of MSG, Okay. Right, monosodium glutamate. Yep. Um, so, either that or just as a supplement, or even in bone broth. Bone broth is really high in glutamine, which a lot of times is a good thing. That's a big thing these it's days. It's a big thing. The bone it's meal. Great stuff. Bone broth. Bone broth. Bone broth. Bone broth. Oh god, I got to get that in my head. <laughs> bone broth. You drink bone meal. You would chew on. No, never mind. Well, you would. <laughs> I give it to my dogs. Do you? Actually, I give them bones. But okay. So bone broth. <laughs> anyway, but what can happen is. You take in glutamine, glutamine is converted to glutamate, which is um, then converted to GABA. So glutamate, though, is an excitatory neurotransmitter, whereas GABA is um, it's a, it's a calming neurotransmitter. What can happen genetically is that process gets stuck. Okay. So my, my point to tell you this is, is it can create more anxiety. It can create more, if you're already in a tense state, it can make it worse. So, so are you saying that you know you've had too much bone broth if you get too anxious? If, if you have the, the, just the right set of genetics, uh -huh. yes, if, if, it, if it's making you more anxious, it could be you're not, you don't have the ability to convert that glutamate to GABA. Do you realize there are food clubs <laughs> in this city that, that serve up little, little mason jars of bone broth yeah. as a, as a pre-cocktail? And I want to say that this is a good thing. Bone broth is amazing. It's incredibly therapeutic. It's okay. full of collagen. It's full of great amino acids, full of minerals. It's awesome. I'm just saying that I can't tell you everybody needs to go out and take a bunch of glutamine because it could cause problems. Okay. But what we want to be sure that we're doing is taking supplements that are healing and nourishing to the gut, whatever that might look like. So there is one that's called um, uh, zinc carnosine. Zinc carnosine is a lot of really good data for helping to, to repair the gut lining. Okay. Aloe vera, um, licorice root, things like that that can help to uh, repair the gut lining. But we have to be careful what we're doing because we're not all the same. So this is a good time for people to know how to contact you and maybe on your website mm -hmm. listing some of the scientific supplements you just mentioned, the zinc based, the glutamate mm -hmm. and, and, and some other things. So where would they reach out to you? TasteLifeNutrition.com is my website. Hold on a minute. TasteLifeNutrition.com. <laughs> Got it. I'm a Texas girl, but I always talk yeah. too fast. <laughs> Shooting the deal. Okay. TasteLifeNutrition.com. Great site, by the way. Thank you. Um, so You're take a look at that. We're overhauling it soon. Okay. Well, don't change a lot of the good stuff. No. <laughs> so take, take note of that. 
and also realize that on Nikki's site, like many really great sites, there's information you should respond to. So take your time, drill down, look at the messages before you move on to the next page. Don't be too millennial. Slow down. So there's another thing that I have done fairly recently, but there's an assessment mm -hmm. on there that if you go on to the website, it'll it'll what's the word I'm looking for? It'll take you to an assessment. If you click on the link, it'll take you to an assessment. This is part of my typical. It's a small part, but a part of my typical so intake. Home page. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and so you can go to that, and it's it's free, and it comes to me, and I can look at it, and then I, we can. That time to take a little bit of time to talk about it. I can validate that. Yeah, you've done it. It works. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're in process. Uh, okay, so supplements uh, should be part of your world if you know that you've got some of the deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Have there been deficiencies of chemistry in our body because we've just grown them out? of our diet. I mean, zinc is one. I know that. Magnesium, I thought, was another one. And we're always low in magnesium. Lots of people are low Because we've just, yeah. water systems, the way we've cultivated crops, things have just changed. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. The, yeah, the way that we grow our food, the lack of the nutrients within our food, the the, the way that we, we don't turn over crops and we just keep using the same soil and put, putting the same petroleum-based um, fertilizers on it. I mean, it's just what we do is for, conventionally, conventionally, it's just, it's bad news. Um, well, we've been in crazy town for a while mm -hmm. with regard to food. I oh, think yeah. it's, the more we can get awareness through actual utilization, because look, at, we've talked, Nikki and I both talked about some scientific things and, and it, some people may go, whoa, whoa, I'm getting nappy time here. I, I want you to. I what want do you, you mean to, that everybody likes the sciencey stuff? <laughs> no, regret, <laughs> regretfully no. Uh, but it's the basis for where this, the the lifestyle changes need to to happen. So what I'm asking you to do is take a look. You know, practice what we've talked about already. You know, go through the five senses. Get a uh, remove the negative mindset. Practice your senses. Be it, be inquisitive about you, so that you can improve yourself. Because that's what 360 performance is all about. Performance enrichment. Performance. Uh, improvement and so as, as I say that I'm, I'm segueing into our last segment which is um, performance hey Jason. Sorry, it's my friend Jason. performance processes uh, performance results but before I do that I want to make sure I mention um, germ block the um, antibacterial germicidal hand cream hand lotion and empower uh, bodycare.com I have them right here see them in my hand <laughs> They're not. They're on the other side of the counter, which I'm not going to go after. Um, <laughs> so go to empowerbodycare.com and use the code LW010 to uh, apply a discount code to um, attacking an infl inflammation from working out. As the slogan says on the bottle, it says, put it where it hurts. So use the CBD-based oils and lotions to help you feel better. Um, with embodycare.com and use the code LW010. Okay. Um, Nikki, is there anything else you want to say about your site before I go into the next segment? About my site? Or your services? No. Um, I don't think I mean, so. The assessment think, is a good I thing. The assessment is a good thing. I think the big, biggest thing to understand is, is that I, what a functional nutritionist <coughs> is, if you don't already know. So, a big part of what I do is I run labs. Mm -hmm. um, I want to truly understand how the body is functioning, why it's functioning the way that it is, whether that's good or bad, um, and then understand how to balance, and that's how, what I do. For my clients, um, everything is very personalized and individual. I've never done the same protocol for the same for, for clients um, because, you know, even if we are twins, we have our, still have the same, you know, our different environmental, uh, environmental um, assaults, essentially, and the way that we handle them and stressors and Everything's different, so um, we're going to react to them differently. So. Well, I'm a personal testimonial, people. I'm going through it right now, and even yeah. with without the data as of yet, gone through the chemistry process, yeah. just have the data yet, yeah. but the recommendations yeah. that Nikki has given me has made a difference in the way I feel, and that ultimately is what I want to get to. I want to perform at or better than I have in the past. My world is changing. I've gotten older. Things, because of the aging process, change the way you used to feel when you were 25 or 35 or even 45. So. That heightened awareness is important to me, and Nikki's been a great part of that process for me. So, life, what is it? 
website? Taste. Oh, that's it. Taste life. <laughs> TasteLifeNutrition.com. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so our last segment is about is about process. We talked a little bit about uh, mental conditioning, which was the environment. That's the segment before then. And the environment is like places like this at Mondo Market. Uh, coming to here, finding these places that will satisfy what you need so that you can put it into a process of behavior that's going to give you the nutrient values you need to feel good about yourself. Um, now for my athletes, look at guys and gals, I know you have nutritionists that work with you. I was just looking at uh, yesterday uh, two, two pro teams, uh, the Arizona Cardinals was one that st stuck out at me because they have, get this, they have uh, 11 nutritionists. Wow. And some of them are nutritionist cooks, uh -huh. and some of them yeah. are nutritionists with a specific focus. Yeah. 11, 11 wow. nutritionists. Now I'm kind of wondering, that's a good thing initially, yeah. but then I'm thinking, what message is being sent? Hopefully they are having their <laughs> meetings and coming together and they're sending at least a single message. I, I would, one would hope so, right? Yeah. Um, but then they might think, well, we've got, you know, f almost 60 football players, each one of them having a different profile. Yeah. Nutritional profile. Now, I don't know if they're functional or not, or they're just. There's probably some in there. I would one would hope so. Yeah. One would hope so. Or but at least that, they're communicating with their docs and getting. Them now, when I look at another football team, which I won't name their name, because they're the other extreme, they had none. None, really. No nutritionists. Wow. Now, that's amazing. <laughs> now, behind the scenes, though, operationally, they may have somebody they work with outside of the team sure, yeah. to bring in meals and catering. Now, that seems to me to be a little bit less insightful and specific about the needs sure because yeah. as we're talking mm -hmm. here we're talking about nutritional functional processes mm -hmm. to get to a result right. that's going to help you be the best you can be and when you said brain trauma yeah. immediately put somebody into a leaky gut situation mm -hmm. that means that's an enhanced soreness and so that's beyond the, the concussion protocol they go through oh yeah so I, I'm going to guess the nutritionists and physicians on the staffs of these football, basketball, baseball, soccer teams probably haven't made the connection. I, I don't know. I can't say. I know I'm going to find out. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great way to go because the, the data is, is, is fairly new as far as I know. I, I think I learned about this maybe a year ago. Okay. So, um, you know, and I'm, I try to be on the cutting edge and I'm not, you know, I learn from who I know is the best. Point is, um, understanding that that you know concussions, and this has become part of my intake now. That con concussions that happen when you were a kid, you know, can create a lot of stuff that maybe you're dealing with 20 or 30 or 40 years later. When you thought there was this minor concussion, no big deal, knocked you out a little bit, and you move on. Yeah. You know, a lot of that could potentially be due to that. I mean, well, it's an here, amazing thing. Here's another example. It's not an athlete, professional athlete, but a colleague of mine. Um, about a month ago, um, slipped on the ice and hit his head. Now he had a the kind of the whiplash effect of the, the neck, so he had that. That's where the concussion came from. Yeah. So he didn't think anything of it until he started getting achiness, the foggy brain. Decided to go into the doctor uh, about a month later, and now he's on a protocol. But he's having trouble with uh, his digestion. I'm going to see him next week for lunch. <laughs> so we'll we'll talk about lunch for sure, but we'll talk about it perhaps asking him to go see my colleague <laughs> Nikki Burnett, a functional nutritionist, to see if he needs some a little bit more help from another another perspective. Okay, so I have a good team too. People, um, and one in particular, a chiropractor who works really well with these kinds of situations yeah. um, that are the post concussion trauma situations um, and I mean there are people out there that are that it is their focus because it's such a big deal well and concussions can happen from the most sublime of activities or I should I'm sorry not concussions brain trauma can happen because a concussive state is different than a brain trauma brain trauma includes a concussive state so physical therapists are now trained in protocols and techniques to help brain trauma patients, both from the standpoint of response times, execution of fine motor skills, uh, those kinds of things. So you could have a, like a whole cadre of folks 
working with you from a functional nutritionist all the way down to your uh, physical therapist and chiropractor and what have you. Um, it, it doesn't take much. Uh, now, that's being said from a real hardhead like me, who, who knows how many concussions I've had over the years. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> But I'm, I'm now trying to work on taking care of myself. So the process is, Nikki, about getting to certain results. In the extreme case with a brain trauma, that's one thing. But on a day-to-day -day basis, what would you recommend to moms and dads regarding the snacks, uh, the lunches, and the preparation of lunches, that, that process to get, because I know you have a, a whole philosophy and method for storing food. It's a process for performance that would be beneficial for people to hear about. Sure. Well, I mean, I think storing food, um, don't use plastic. You know, it's that simple. Plastic, so glass? So glass, ceramic, um, uh, what's the, the, the rubbery? Tupperware? No, no. That's mostly plastic. There's yeah. something that I'm thinking of that's not coming to me. Uh, silicone. Okay. Silicone is, uh, I think much better than plastic. And, and since you recommended that, I, we've, my wife and I have made inventory of the, the plastics and we were surprised at how many glass and silicone products we had that we weren't using them as, a, as often. Because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you get your favorites, you have things you like, you know, yeah. the shape, the size, the lid, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we've made changes. Um, it, it's, it's so inconsequential, you don't think about it, but it has an impact. It has a, it has a really big impact. So what about Ziploc bags for the snacks for the kids going to school? You know, because glass there, is problematic are, in lunch bags. There, bag are, there are convenience factors, and they also they now have Ziploc silicone bags that are reusable oh. and dishwasher safe and that kind of thing. There you so go. That's a good idea. Now there's more of an expense, but there's a lot less waste. Yeah. Right. So you know, I think it probably balances itself out pretty well. Get rid of the plastic, just reuse the silicone. Um, and you're saving money essentially in the, in the long run. But there, not everybody can do that, and I get it. You know, if you're putting um, your organic chips <laughs> in, <laughs> in a plastic it's an old bag, word. the old word again. <laughs> or, or if you're, you know, the vegetables and, and, and the fruits and that kind of thing, you're putting them in a plastic bag. Is it dangerous potentially? Yep. Um, what is what we know is truly dangerous is if it's heated. Uh, if you put plastic in a microwave or you heat it, you know, they have those those meals that you just put yeah. directly into the microwave as plastic. And it just is, it's just an amazing, it's hormone disruptive, it's potentially cancer causing, it's nasty. Stuff. So what you're saying is the heat causes the leaching into the food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And that get then you consume that and off you go. What, what are some, are there any immediate symbols or is it an ongoing over time kind of result of that? Ongoing. Okay. Something like that. I don't think that anybody would do it. Okay. Yeah, because once you have, you know, hormone, because they're, the, especially when it comes to hormone disruption, the chemicals are called xenoestrogens. And so those estrogens, these, they're, they're not real, but they act like estrogens. And so they bind to estrogen receptor sites doesn't let our own natural estrogens do its job. And so we have this situation where men and women and even kids have way too much estrogen in their bodies. Good. I have estrogen? You could, but I don't know yeah. yet. We'll see. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. You're getting the numbers. You could. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, and men, you have estrogen anyway. But there are situations. Oh, it's kind of a setup, I, you know. No. I know. Yeah, you're gonna have. It's some a science anyway. thing. You're supposed to. Yeah, exactly. But just not too much. It's like getting in touch with my feminine yeah. side. <laughs> How much estrogen do I really have? <laughs> and are my receptors being? We will let you being, know next time. <laughs> are my receptors being compromised? They might be. Yeah. They might See be. the jokes? We can do jokes. <laughs> get people to science jokes. Get it? Yeah. Get into the science, people. Okay. So we're about a minute over time, but we started a minute late. I want to thank Nikki Burnett again for being a great part of our show at 360 fun. Performance. Yeah, it's about performance and nutrition. And functional nutrition is a big part of being a high performer. So that being said, everybody have a great day. We're going to say goodbye for today. Come back next Friday at 11 Hi, and enjoy the day. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys.